I think this trial is about a number of issues, but actually if you put them all together, whether it's to do with diet or environment or animal welfare or worker welfare or human welfare, at the end of the day they all come together into one thing and it is about uh, firstly profit versus uh, environmental resources in the widest sense. Uh, and I am implacably opposed to people exploiting the environment in that widest sense in order to make money. So that is a major issue, make no mistake about it in the case. The other one is the ability of those who exploit the environment in this way to contain their exploitation by effectively curtailing the freedom of speech. What this company has done and what all major international companies do, never mind governments, because these companies have far more power now, we're talking about global economies, they have more power than governments, is essentially that if you should raise your head above the parapet and say anything that's remotely critical of these companies, they threaten you with a writ straight away. And of course the pattern, the trail, historical trail of the last 10 years is that every time this company issues a writ, people begin to tremble. Why? Not because they're not telling the truth, but because they haven't got the courage, they haven't got the resources, they haven't got the patience, and they haven't got the stamina. And these are major individuals and organizations, the BBC, Channel 4, Guardian, other newspapers, uh, societies and associations like the Vegetarian Society and so on. All have been attacked in this way, and all in the end have had to back down. I have to say I have undying admiration for both of these two. One, I'd like to be in a position where I could say I've devoted um, two years, three years of my life to one cause in this way, and I feel rather humble that I actually haven't done that. I mean, I've fought a lot of cases and I've fought them very hard, but none of them have lasted this length of time, and none of them have demanded the undoubted sacrifice that these two have made. And I think they have done a brilliant and necessary job for all of us, and that's why I have the guilt about it, because it's for all of us. Namely, they've put on the agenda uh, things that nobody else has been prepared to do. They've taken on the companies that none of the other organizations who have got the resources have been prepared to do. I think the ultimate product of what these two have done is in fact to have turned the tables over this past two years. And they forced McDonald's into a recognition and a realization that it is in fact McDonald's and the values they stand for that are now on trial, that the public have now recognized that there's a very different issue here. It's not about the great image of McDonald's and the magnitude of, and the magnanimity of McDonald's. It's about the fact that ordinary people have been able to expose how degraded our environment has become. So I think there should have been a jury for this. You can't have a more important issue. It is a global issue that has been taken on here. And a jury are particularly well positioned to make factual judgments of this kind. Uh, the difference it would make is that I think that a jury is more in tune with uh, the environment, and I mean that in the broadest sense, than a single judge. The idea that one person has to come to a judgment on a mass of this material I think is a ludicrous proposition. One of the legal ramifications of this case has been that McDonald's quite clearly have put a cordon sanitaire around the case. They recognize the ramifications of this case were the truth about what has been said in court to be released onto the world stage. They have suddenly recognized that things that have been said in court by their own executives not only are in many instances quite laughable, but also in many instances they're having and being forced into recognizing the truth of the material that was put out in the first place in the fact sheets. There's been very, very little attention paid to this trial by the media, both in terms of the news media and newspapers, and news media in terms of television journalists as well. And one suspects it's because they're afraid and they're put in fear by the threat of writs and a major corporation. And it seems to me that that itself is a travesty on our so-called democratic society, that there is this self-censorship and fear. 
think the other good thing about this is that McDonald's may be forced to think twice as to whether it is desirable for them to be engaging in this kind of litigation because in fact I think they should be under no illusion that there will be other Helens and Daves in this world wherever they are, New Zealand uh, or Toronto or London, who will be prepared to take the same stand. So all one can say to McDonald's is if you exercise the same stupidity for a second occasion, then you will be spending more money on litigation than you are on hamburgers.